sometimes I wonder why these things happen to people. Like, I didn't want to fucking be out here. Nobody ever wants to be out here, but it's like, damn, like, why does life make it so hard to want di different? Like, why is it that no matter what you do, like, your life's always just surrounded by the same thing? Like, me, like, I've tried moving away, you know? Like, I've, like, I, I've, like, because me, it's like, I don't need to smoke. I don't need to smoke, you know? I don't need to do anything out here. But it's like, I sit there and I, I've tried moving away. I've tried staying sober, not smoking. I've tried fucking everything. And it's just like, no matter how hard I try, I just seem to get stuck back into the sauce. And I'm sick and tired of it already. Like, I don't want to be out here. Do you think it's something to do with the childhood that you had that makes you believe you don't work, deserve anything better and keeps you down here? I mean, I know I deserve better. It's just I don't have the means to about. I don't have the means to go about getting it. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. the fuck? <laughs> it's a crazy neighborhood, especially at night. Oh, you should have seen this one time. It's just a big fat guy, right? Huge. Running down the street, asshole naked. Like, asshole naked. Like, running like, ah. I was like, what the fuck? I felt bad after, but I recorded it. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So, Christina. Yes, sir. So, it's been a month or so since our last talk. And... A lot of people, including myself, found you very interesting. You know, you, you, you've come from a very tough situation. Your, your family kind of left you high and dry, it sounds like, and uh, you're homeless. You're living a, a very rough life. What, I mean, what, what do you think would help your situation? I mean, for starters, like... So, so you're, you're 16? Yeah. And... and you know, so you're 16, you, you've got basically 8th grade education, you have a criminal record too, right? Yeah. Not like, like, not too extensive, but yeah. Yeah, and you're homeless? Yeah. Like, honestly, like... And you have a daughter. Where's your daughter? They took her when I had her. So she went to the foster system? Nah. Um, she got adopted by a family who couldn't have kids. She where? She got adopted by a family who couldn't have kids. Oh, I see. I'm kind of glad though, like, because when I was in the hospital and they told me they were going to take her, and then I called my mom and I told my mom, like, hey, I need your help, you know? Like, for once in your life, like, help me out, you know? Because I felt like they were ripping my soul away from me. Like, I was like, damn, like, you know? Like, I didn't know what to do. I freaked out. So I just called my mom, like, because, like, obviously, it means, like, being young, it's, like, the first thing you think about when you're in trouble or when, you, when you're afraid or when you're scared or when you're, like, w you know? Like, waking out is, like, like, mom, like, I want to see, you know, my mom, like, so I called her and I told her, like, hey, can you pick up my baby? Like, they're going to take her. And she was just like, that sounds like a personal problem. You should have thought about that when you ran away. And she hung up on me. I was like, fuck. Why did they take your baby? Drugs. Drugs. I had drugs in my system. But I, okay. I was, I was already six months pregnant, but I wasn't even showing. Like, I, when I, I found out I was pregnant because I felt her move, you know? And I didn't bother going to the hospital or anything because my baby's dad wouldn't let me. Because he swore that I was trying to fuck everybody, even though I wasn't. So he wouldn't let me go to the hospital or the doctor or anything like that. He would just keep me locked up in the house, right? And so by the time I turned to six months, I, I thought I was about three, but in reality I was six. And so my plan was that, right, three months before I have to give birth, I was, I was just like, you know, make sure I stop being high. And it just didn't work out that way because, like, my baby daddy didn't let me go to the hospital and stuff, so I couldn't, you know? I couldn't, like, I didn't know where, exactly how far along I was. Do you have anyone in your life that you trust or that you can, you can go to in, in a tough situation? I'm just this guy I told you about. Yeah, it's good to have somebody. Yeah. I mean, he can't help much, you know, because he's in the same position that I'm in, but it's like... No, but somebody to bounce ideas off of? It's somebody that I can tell anything to, and he'll figure out the best way to help me. Like, I've never had somebody help me emotionally like it's still like emotional support you know because it's never financial support because we both broke as fuck but it's like yeah 
it, it helps me be like him being there. Like if I didn't have him in my life right now, like I don't know where I'd be. I'd probably be out gaming or something. You know, yeah. like he taught me that there's more to life than just this. Like there's more to life than just Skid Row. Because at first that's all I thought. I remember one time I fucking fell asleep in his car, right? And when I woke up, I was at the most fucking gorgeous view I've ever seen in my life. Like, it was it was amazing, like, it was badass. Like, and I, I turned to him and I was like, why did you bring me here? He's like, you see that? I was like, see what? He's like, look outside. And I looked and he's like, that's life. He's like, that's what life is. He's like, it's not what you think it is. And ever since then, I just kind of started like slowing down, you know? Yeah, no, what you're, is this life here on Skid Row is definitely not. It goes fast, fast, fast. It's not reality here. You can be walking out of the street one minute, next minute, you know, you're getting, you're getting into a fight with somebody for no fucking reason, just for the fuck of it. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of sucks. Like, now that I think about it, like, I did a lot of stupid shit, you know? I'm doing a lot of stupid shit still. And it's like, <sighs> I don't want to go back to my parents or anything like that because I'm already in, like, independent as it is, you know? Like, I've had to survive this long out here by myself, so, like, what the fuck do I need that for? But I don't want to be out here either. <laughs> like, like, I honestly, like, my goal is to just, like, get my own spot, start going back to school, and just be cool, you know? Live my life. That would be a great couple of steps. School, for sure. But, like, for example, like I've 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 saved up money for a spot like three times already, and every time once it gets like a good amount to where I'm thinking about like okay, like I, I can finally start looking for something, it either gets stolen, or like this last time it got burned because my spot burned down, yeah. or it just goes missing and nobody knows what happened. So 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 you use meth, but you don't seem like an addict. Are you addicted to crystal meth? No. Yeah, you just. I can stop whatever I want. Yeah, you seem. You don't seem to be as hardcore as a lot of people. I've. Oh, I've seen people. That are like, oh my god. <laughs> I'm like, dude, calm down. Yeah. It's because there's this phrase that everyone uses out here. It's I do drugs, the drugs don't do me. But there's some people that you look at them, you're like, nigga, you're burnt the fuck out. Look at you. <laughs> the drugs most definitely do you. I think it's like. If I could just get enough money to get my own spot and leave far away from here, I'll probably never come back. Like, ever. Yeah, well, you seem a lot less uh, angry today than you did last time I talked to you. <laughs> <laughs> you. You seem to be just like... The last time I was angry about some shit, so you know. You were hell-bent on self-destructing, and today you seem a little more level-headed. Yeah. Which is nice. This is how I usually am. When I get mad, I just start thinking like, oh, this crazy shit. Before, I would have done it, you know? Like, oh, I'm going to go do this to this person. I'm going to do this to this person. And I would have gone and go do it. Like, oh, like, you know? Now I'm just like, it's not even worth it. Like, for what? Yeah. What am I going to get from that? So what you would do is get get situated somewhere away from here. Very far away from here. Get a high school education? Yeah. And then figure I already out. enrolled. I already enrolled into a school, but they're charging me. And so, like, I sent them a, like, a handwritten letter explaining my situation, and I was still waiting for them to get back at me and see what's up. I highly doubt they're going to do it, though. Schools never do that. Schools never do that. I said, I highly doubt they're going to do it, though. It's like, you know, schools never do that. Excuse me. I'm hoping they do, though. Like, because once I can do that, once I can get away from here, like, at the end of the day, it's like, I don't need to be here. Like, there's nothing here that's good for me, like, to where it's helping me in any kind of way. Whether it be emotional, religious, emotion, like, emotional again, like, mostly emotional. I'm, like, a really emotional person. But it's like, ain't nobody giving me money out here. Ain't nobody helping me out. Ain't nobody fucking giving me love and affection. Nobody's fucking, there's no reason that's why I should be out here. I don't even talk to my hood anymore, so it's like, you know, like, so the, uh, the gang connection that you had is kind of gone? I cut it off. Yeah. Yeah, I, I told them, I was like, look, I have a baby. I was like, I'm straight, I'm cool. Like, I put in my work already, like I already did my job. Like, I was your guys' guinea pig for like, a few years. 
like, either you guys let me leave or I'm, I'm gonna make you let me leave. Like, I give a fuck. I was like, okay, if I find that you guys are coming after me, I was like, I will find you. I was like, I, I know everything about each and every single one of you guys. I was like, don't make me use it against you. Because that's, that's it, I think, the advantage of them, like, like making me the person that I am, because it's like, if they would have taught me all their loopholes and all their ways and all the things that they do, then you would never know how to get that person back, you know? But since you know everything about that person or that group or whatever, it gives you an advantage because you know exactly how they're gonna move. And because there's so many of them, it's like they can't change it up. They have to move that way. And so it gives me an advantage just to like steer clear from them, you know? I try to avoid them as much as possible. Given all the, uh the rough stuff that you've seen and, you, and the t tough childhood you've had. What, I mean, how do you see life? Do you see life as a good Life is whatever you or? make it. Like, if you can't accept that you were wrong and accept help, because there's a lot of people that are very prideful, like extremely prideful. Like, I used to be really prideful. Like, I would never go to a shelter or take food from people that give it out, you know? Because I felt like, nah, like, I, I can't be seen doing that, the fuck. And then, like, all of a sudden I realized like, yo, like, it's not even like that. Like, you're supposed to take the help. You're supposed to want help. Like, you're not supposed to want to be out here all hardcore, like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna get shit, I can do it myself. That's not the way that works. Like, the way that it's supposed to be is like, you're supposed to strive to do things better. You're supposed to strive to be the best person you can be. And at this point, the only thing I want is like, I don't want my daughter to grow up and try to find me and me be all fucked off in a fucking, you know, in a ditch or something. Or I don't want her to like grow up and try to find me and find out that, that I'm, cause like my mom, like, my mom's not here smoking crack. Being a prostitute right there on, on fucking, what's that street called? Um, fuck. Figaro? No, right here. Oh, here. Uh, right down the street, literally around the corner. Oh, Agatha. There you go. That street. Like my mom was like a straight prostitute and I got like she she literally like she literally laid there like this on the floor all day, smoking crack and just hopping in the cars and left and right. Like they each had their own designated corner. It's kinda of funny. Like I said, it's like if they play musical chairs. Like like once we'll hop, one hops in a car, like the next one goes that way. Like they cross the street and then my mom will cross this way. And then like that one will cross this way. And then another one will fill in the corner that's missing. <laughs> I'm sure I've seen your mom. I just don't know who she is. Michelle. Oh, I know your mom. Yeah. That's your mom. mom? Yeah. No. I got into it with her with her boyfriend a couple days ago. Because he was hitting her. And she told me. And I had already warned him like a few times. I was like, yo, like, you put hands on my mom again, dog, we're going to have issues. And me, like, now. I feel like I'm more mature about shit, so I don't like getting like that with people no more. Like, I don't want to be that person. It's better to be respected than feared, you know? But I've come to realize that the fear that I put in people back then is now affecting my respect level that I'm getting from now. Because now they're seeing like, oh, she's calming down. Oh yeah, I remember that bitch did this and this and this to me. Fuck that bitch. And now that I'm calmed down, and now that I'm not trying to do anything to nobody, that's when I was taking advantage of like, you know? trying to get back at me, like revenge type shit. Do you think seeing the situation that maybe you're like your mom is in or some of the other older women helps you? Most definitely. I've never, I've, I have never tried crack in my life. Ever, 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 never, ever, ever. Or coke. Never, hey, ever. Your, your mom does crack, right? Hmm? Your mom does crack. Right? <laughs> so, so much crack. Yeah. So much crack, it's not even funny. <laughs> no, but, 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 but seeing these. Seeing my mom's friends and my mom doing that, me growing up, I swore I was never gonna do it because I refused to end up like that. So you think it might help you break the cycle? Yeah. Even, even though you've lost your daughter, but you're still young and you could have 17 more kids. I don't, because look, when I, when I came out here, my goal was, okay, I'm gonna find my mom and I'm gonna tell her I'm a kid and then we're gonna go live happily ever after. That was my childish thinking, you know? And it was like, I was so disappointed when I found my mom. Like, so disappointed, like, like, it broke me, like, because I had these expectations in my mind, but I come to find out that she's just fucking another crackhead prostitute on the street. And then it's like, damn, like, 
I don't want my, my daughter to see me that way. Like, she's already going to have some sort of resent towards me because of the fact that I, that I jammed on her. You know? And it's like, she's not going to know the details. She's not going to know what really happened. She's not going to know what I was feeling at the time. Like, I was young and I was scared. Like, I'm just hoping that I'm in a way better position than I am now so that when she does find me, if hopefully, Lord willing, she does, that I can explain it to her. Can, can you... Because I know for a fact that if she were to find me down here, she won't give me the time of day. Can you envision the difference that your daughter, one day, one day your daughter will be your age and she'll talk to you, hopefully, and the difference between you being in a situation like your mom or similar to that or, or you know, where you are and where your mom is is kind of like... Yeah, you're, like, you're, I, like I just said before. Or like, you could be a college, uh, high school graduate. You could have your life together. You could be far from Skid Row. Yeah, that's why, that's why I'd be like, well, I just right now, like, I know for a fact she won't give me the time of day. Why? Because it's like, like, when I had her do like, it was a trip. Like, she looks just like me. Like, like damn near identical, like, I swear. <laughs> like... Her whole facial structure is like all me. Like it doesn't even look like I have a baby today. It looks like I fucked myself and had a baby. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> there's like no, there's no like asset to her face that doesn't look like mine. Yeah. Like, I was tripping out. It's so, like her attitude too. Like when she came out, she wasn't even crying. She was looking at the nurse like, "Bitch, are you touching me?" <laughs> and she was giving her this face like. <laughs> she has your personality too. And so that's how I know, like, I know for a fact that if she goes up and finds me out here, she's just gonna literally just look at me and just walk away. Because that's what I would do. That's what I did, actually. I see my mom, I told her, I was like, fuck you. And I just walked away. And she tried to talk to me and everything. I was like, bitch, like, why are you talking to me? Like, why are you in front of me? Like, I don't want shit to do with you. Fuck you. Like, what are you doing out here? Like, you couldn't even, like, like, I wasn't enough for you to want to do better. Like, that's how I see it. So I know that that's how she's gonna see it, I think. And so it's like, you know, like, I'd rather not, I'd rather, like, I'd rather just be good, have my own spot, or just, like, you know, if she wants to come over, like, she can, I just, you know, wishful thinking, but I know that if I get to it and I actually do it, it's, it's like, you know, nine times out of ten more likely to happen. There is that slight one percent, but, you know. What's your favorite thing about yourself? My network. My network. I think that that's like one of the best things that I have. So well, I mean, out here at least. But I mean, like your social skills. Help yeah, you. my knowledge about things. Because I, I don't know everything, but I know a little bit about a lot of things. Like, I can't build you a house, but I know how to fucking nail a nail. Like, I can't freaking do the whole pipeline thing for the fucking plumbing, but I know how to fucking, like, like fix the toilet and, like, you know, like the Drano shit and all that stuff. Like, I can't fucking paint you some, mo like, some fucking, like, Angelo shit, but I can, pr I can draw you a pretty picture, like, shit like that, you know? Like, I don't know how to do everything the right way it's supposed to be done, but I know how to do it my way, and my way is still effective. So I help out, uh, like, a lot. Everywhere. Okay, that, that's all I like. I'm helpful. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind. I think sometimes too much. I allow people to get away with certain things that I shouldn't allow. That's why I feel like, that's why I feel more and more every day like I'm not meant to be out here. Like, the way I am is just not meant to be out here. Like, I, I the people that are out here, like, they're grimy, they're conniving, and they will fucking get you whatever they can. Yeah. There's a world outside of here that isn't like that. Exactly. And it's like the way I, I, cause I, 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 before I would feel bad doing shit to people, like I would think about it, like my conscience would fuck with me, like damn, like I just did that to that person, like that was somebody's mom, somebody's brother, sister, cousin, son, daughter, whatever the fuck, you know? Like I would think about the after, like the aftermath, like fuck, like I wonder like how their family's doing, like damn, like they're probably like devastated, like damn. And I would make me feel like shit, you know? That was one of the like, the, like the biggest motivations for me to tell my hood, like hey, you know what, like, because <laughs> it was just, it's too much. I'm not meant for that kind of shit. I was dragged into it on purpose and it was like, they seen something good and they wanted to destroy it because misery loves company. So they grabbed it and they tried to destroy me, but yet I'm still here. Yeah. Well, it's very encouraging to hear you today because today you sound like hopeful and positive. 
yeah. and willing to do whatever it takes to, to, to kind of improve your situation. Yeah, for sure. Or hopeful, at least, of doing that. Yeah, like, because that day, that day, the other time that I came, I, I looked at myself in the mirror and I just, like, I thought about, like, everything. And then I thought, like, I honestly looked at you and I was like, that could have been me. Because, like, I wanted to be a photographer at one point, you know? And so it's like, that could have been me, but I fucked up. You're only 16. <laughs> you got plenty of time. I know, but... You could be 26 and you still got plenty of time. I feel like... You could be 36. I feel like what I've been through out here, yeah. if I ever were to hopefully get a normal life, like a normal, like, just like stable, like stability, like, if I were to ever get that stability, like, I feel like that would take a toll on the way people are around me and the opportunities I might be able to get because people would look at me different. I mean, like people would look at me like, oh, look, that's that game member. Or, oh, look, that's that, like, you know? Or like, because I've had people tell me like recently, like, oh, stop trying to be something you're not. I'm, like, what are you talking about? Because me, like, before I wouldn't give a fuck how I looked. Like, I would look like shit all the time. That day that I came out, I kind of looked like shit. I was tired. <laughs> but um, it's like, I started to give a fuck about what people, like, how people view me, like, the way I look to people. That's why I don't act like an addict. That's why I don't be wigging the fuck out, running around naked on the street. Like, I don't, you know? Why? Because it's like, like, it's not that I give a fuck about my reputation. It's I give a fuck about myself. Like, like I don't want to look all dirty and nasty. Like, because I mean, like, I walk into the store, people look at me all weird. I hated that feeling. I swear to God, I hated that feeling. Like, back then, I would walk, I would, I would walk into a store or something, right? And people would just look at me like, ugh, you know? And that feeling that it gave me was just like, Sucked. So I was like, you know what? Like, I can't, I can't, can't be doing that shit. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just. And people have been telling me like, oh, like, well, you think that just because you're dressing different and and, you, and you're looking clean and shit that people don't know who you are? They're like, they still know who you are. I was like, I don't give a fuck if they know who I am. I was like, they think I know who I am too. I was like, and it's, I was like, and trust me, you'll never get to know that person. I was like, because you don't deserve it. Like, you ain't shit. No, I think that the, that attitude is a. Is a key attitude in terms of getting your life to where you want it to be. All these people out here can talk all the shit that they want. Once they can get on my level, and they've been through the shit that I've been through, and they can actually know what it feels like to be in my position, then they can come get at me. Other than that, they need to shut the fuck up. And if they got an issue with me saying that, then they can we can get down. It was good. Like. At the end of the day, it's like, regardless of whether I fight that person or not, it's not going to change anything in my life. My life's still going to go on after that. Like, words do affect me a lot, though. Like, I'm really, like, I'm, like I said, emotional person. But at the end of the day, it's like, when it comes to people that are relevant, it's like, like, if it's somebody that I don't give a fuck about, they can sit there call me a bitch, ho, slut, fucking... The homeless bum, whatever the fuck, ugly, fucking, whatever the fuck, I don't care. It's like, you're irrelevant. Shut the fuck up. I don't care. <laughs> but it's like, if it's somebody that I give a fuck about, then I'm, I am going to take into consideration what they're telling me, because obviously they're telling me for a reason, you know? That's something that, th that this guy taught me. His name's Bliss. Like, B-L-I-S-S, -S, Bliss. Everyone's got a street name. And yours is? Homicide. Homicide. <laughs> but I think his is better. I, could, I, could, I think his I is way better. Use, I just couldn't his use is more homicide approachable. when I did your first video. I'm like, I'm not going to call it homicide. His is, his is way more approachable. <laughs> like, imagine, like, you're walking into a room and you get introduced to that person. Like, oh, hi, my name's Bliss. Like, oh, hi. And then, like, you get to me. It's like, hi, my name's Homicide. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I've had that happen so many times. Like, grown-ass people will be like, oh. And I'm like, what? Like, like look at me. I'm cute. I'm cuddly. <laughs> Why? Everyone's got a street name down here. Everyone. No one's Mike or Joe or Karen. No, there is Mike, <laughs> Big Mike. No, there are. I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few. There's a few. But it's so cool to have a street name, I guess. <laughs> and then it's like, if you use somebody's government name, it's like, oh, you used their government name, oh my God. How dare you? Like, it's like the biggest insult. Because <laughs> only cops are supposed to know that. If you ever got your self out of Skid Row, out of this world, would you ever miss it? 
No. Would you ever come back? Hell no. <laughs> that's a great attitude. Hell no. Nah. Because a lot of people say, oh, I want to come back and help. And, that, and that's a normal no. thing, too. Not even that. No, that's Some a normal people, thing, too. You don't know what they're doing. They know I, exactly I, what the fuck they're doing. I love hearing you say that. They know exactly what the fuck they're doing. They know exactly how to get out of it. They're just choosing not to because they like to fuck people. They feel like to fuck everybody. And fuck. It's, honestly, out here, like this area out here, is literally, I kid you not, one big ass orgy. That's all it is. Yeah. One big ass drug induced orgy. Mm -hmm. I swear to God. Like, everyone's fucking everyone. No responsibility. Nothing. Everyone's having sex with everybody. Dude, you see fucking packs of condoms on the street. Everyone's they doing, use them as balloons for kind of loud. Everyone's doing drugs. They use them to fix the bikes. The cops, the cops cruise by and know that this is all going on. The, dude, honestly, like, at one point in my life, I was sitting with my mom, right? And I was trying to tell her, like, mom, like, come move to my spot. At least you won't be here, you know? Because at first I thought my mom didn't like it because she made it seem like if she was being forced to do it. So I was like, mom, like, what's up with that shit? Like, I can't, I've come over here with guns before. Like me and my friends, like not my homies, my friends. Like, like they'll be like, your mom's tripping. Like what the fuck? Like don't even trip. I got you. And we'll show up with guns and she's trying to get my mom out of here. And all of a sudden, I find my mom sucking dick. Like what the fuck? And so I had to like teach myself like, okay, like she's choosing to be out here. She likes this lifestyle. I'll leave her alone. And so I'm sitting there. My mom's sitting in a crack pipe. Cops pull up. They see me. I'm like, oh shit, because I was on the run at the time. I was like. I was like, I can't get up and run. My mom's on the way on this side. Then there's a gang of people on this side. So I was like, fuck. So I just, did, I just stood up and I was just like, I know, I know. I turned around from my hands on my head. Before they even got out of the car, I was already like. <laughs> and then they're literally sitting there like frisking me. And then my mom was just in there. Like, I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? Do you feel like your family or, or just Cubs didn't give a the, fuck. the world has like failed you? Um, not yet. Maybe if I was like 30 something and still out here, yeah. then a little bit. So you don't, you don't have a victim mentality? No. Yeah, More of uh, hopeful. Yeah. Hopefully I get the fuck up out of here. No, you said you. Please help me type shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your personality is very different today. Like, I'm like, more like a, like, I don't want to be here anymore. Like, I'm, I, don't, I don't, I'm miserable out here, like, for real. It's like I know I'm I know I'm capable of doing a lot of things, but till I get out of here, like it's pretty much useless. Right. And I I can feel myself slowly fading away. Like myself, me, the person I started off from when I first first got here, it's really hard for me to remember or the feeling of who that person was. Like it's distant, like it's fading really fast, and I don't want it to go away because once it goes away, it means that this place won. Like. It's like, a, it's like a war. Each, each and every single one of these people out here is at a war with themselves. Bliss told me something. He told me, life is, no, is nothing but a fight against your own disbelief. So which means whatever you don't believe you can do is what you're fighting against. And like, that made sense. It was like, damn. Like, I, like before I would've never thought I was be out here. I would never believe it. Like, nah, fuck that, you know? But yeah, look at me. It's like, life is really a fight against your own disbelief. So if you believe you can't do something, then you're not gonna do it. You know? So that's why I, I try, I'm trying to like keep my head straight and think like, okay, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. It's just hard, like, I can't get resources or anything because it's like, I'm 16, you know? Yeah. It's like, I can't like, go, to, go up to my mom's ass, I was like, hey, can I borrow some money? No, but like, after listening to your first, the first time you came by a month ago, you seemed so self-destructive and just hell bent on, you know, hating everything. And that made it difficult for me to get behind helping you. But the Christina that came by today, this, who you are right now, is, is very easy for me to feel like helping you might be a good thing to do. It's like, I didn't realize like the, like, you know how you know how lucky I am to be right here right now. Like, a lot of people, a lot of people think like, oh no, nah, it's just like you know, it's money. It's not just money. Like people are gonna watch this. People are gonna see you. Like, like make it worth it. Don't just fucking throw it away for some for some quick cash. Like, like that's not worth it. Like, make a difference. Like, you know, like make your little mark in the universe somehow. Like, 
years from now, somebody might be like, hey, remember that one girl we saw on YouTube? Like, you know? Or like, who knows? They could show this video to some girl who just ran away. Because I remember my group home, they, they showed me videos like on YouTube about people and their stories. And at first I didn't want to listen to it, but now I understand why. Like, what if she watches this and she thinks like, fuck, I don't want to be like that. And she stays. And then she grows up to graduate college and becomes something. You know, she's gonna think back and be like, fuck, if I wanna see that video of that girl, I would've never made it here. You know, like, yeah. I think about shit like that. Like, I think about, like, I think about the good things in life most of the time. That's great. I'd rather see the cup as half full, not half empty. Cause I used to see the cup as half empty and I was like a horrible person. <laughs> I was just like, oh, fuck everything. I don't give a fuck, fuck it all. Fucking destructive ass. That's where you, were, that's where you were a month ago when you were here. Yeah. Cause I, I was giving up already. Like I was like slowly just like giving up. Like I was just like fucking done with everything. Like I didn't see myself getting out of here anytime soon. They had just stole my money again. So I was like, you know what? Like, fuck it. I guess this is what it is. You know, but now with you telling me this, it's like, okay, there's a possibility. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see what we can do. I'm going to try to help you out. Sounds great. Can't promise anything, but we'll see. I hope so. All right, y'all. Fingers crossed. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. I'm cute and cuddly. Like a teddy bear. You are so cute. I would be a pretty skinny girl.